Good afternoon everyone. The topic for today's discussion is recent advances in molecular diagnosis of soft tissue sarcomas. So this is the overview of today's lecture since there are a lot number of sarcomas which uh, covering all of them in detail is beyond the scope of this lecture. So we will see uh, all the sar soft tissue sarcomas as well as the molecular pathology techniques in brief. So first starting with molecular pathology. Molecular pathology is an emerging discipline in the field of pathology which deals with the study and diagnosis of the diseases as a, at the molecular or sub-microscopic level. It includes testing of the nucleic acids. Molecular pathology emerged in late 20th century. In 1980, there was a Chinese-American scientist named Yu Dwai Khan and he, uh, he suggested the prenatal genetic testing for thalassemia using the restriction enzymes. Then in 1980, there were companies doing the molecular test. They were like Molecular Diagnostic Incorporated and Bathisda Research Laboratories Molecular Diagnostics. Uh, after that, there is a discovery of new genes and the Human Genome Project was also uh, going on. Uh, uh, so in 1995, there came the Association of Molecular Pathology called AMP and uh, the AMP co-founded the Journal of Molecular Diagnostics in 1999. Now, how is this molecular pathology useful, specifically in case of the sarcomas? Sarcomas, uh, they are a rare type of malignant tumors, which constitute less than 1% of all the adult solid tumors. And uh, they show a very um, similar pattern clinically as well as uh, histopathologically. So there is a large, uh, there is a huge diagnostic dilemma in uh, their diagnosis. There are more than 50 types of uh, sarcomas based on histology only. Also, uh, their clinical codes can be from uh, uh, from uh, benign soft tissue tumors to very malignant and aggressive type uh, sarcomas. Also, uh, these sarcomas show genetic and chromosomal abnormalities which are relatively specific for the type of sarcomas. So, uh, for that we require molecular diagnostic techniques in order to give a definitive diagnosis. Uh, okay, the other uses are like in testing of the nucleic acids which are uh, useful clinically uh, for the diagnosis of hereditary disorders in the field of oncology uh, for the cancer diagnosis and prognosis. Then for the infectious diseases like we have seen uh, in the COVID pandemic, RT-PCR is very extensively used. Then it is used for prenatal testing also. Then diagnosis and prognosis of diseases also in pharmacotherapy and it is a field of research. Now what are the techniques which are uh, involved in molecular diagnostics? First we have polymerase chain reaction, DNA microarray, spectral karyotype imaging, in situ hybridization, in situ RNA sequencing, DNA sequencing, immunohistochemistry, antibody based immunofluorescent tissue array and molecular profiling of the pathogens. So we will see about these uh, techniques in brief. First, what are the steps involved in the genetic approach to the diagnosis and the treatment of a disease? So we have a disease having a genetic component or genetic abnormality. First, we map the genes uh, to identify the specific chromosomal region. And then when the gene is identified, we can use that knowledge for the diagnostic purpose, for the prevention of that disease and for pharmacogenetics. We can also use it for development of gene therapy and giving gene therapy to the patient. Also, it is used to understand the underlying biology of the disease so that we can develop the targeted drug therapy. Now, what is polymerase chain reaction? Uh, in polymerase chain reaction, a small sample of DNA is taken and it is amplified to get a large enough amount so that we can study it in detail. We can amplify the DNA fragments between 0.1 to 40 kilobase pairs and a heat stable DNA polymerase called TAC polymerase obtained from uh, Thermophilus aquaticus bacteria is used in this process. The other uses are like se uh, selective DNA isolation, amplification and quantification of DNA in medical and diagnostic applications, forensic uh, medicine and in infectious diseases applications as well as it is also used in the field of research. Now here in this picture, uh, it, is, it is showing the PCR components and the basic step involved in the PCR. So first we have a thermal cycler in which uh, we put the DNA sample, primers, 
nucleotides, tag polymerase enzyme, mixing buffer, and we have the PCR tube. Then in this cycler, the three main process takes place. First is denaturation of double-stranded DNA, which takes place at 95 degrees Celsius temperature. The two strands of the DNA get separated. After that, using the primers, the annealing process takes place. And then the extension, which is the formation of a new strand of the DNA. So from the original uh, double-stranded DNA, we can get a number of uh, double-stranded DNAs. Then uh, what is DNA microarray? In DNA microarray, we have a DNA chip, also called as a biochip, which is nothing but the collection of microscopic DNA spots attached to a solid surface. And it is used, uh, used to measure the expression level of large number of genes simultaneously, or we can say to genotype multiple regions of a genome simultaneously. Uh, the basic principle here is of hybridization, that is complementary nucleic acid sequence. They specifically pair with each other by formation of a hydrogen bond. So uh, in this picture, they are, these are the basic steps involved in DNA microarray. We have a normal cell and a cancer cell. First, we culture it, and then we isolate the uh, RNA from it. That is the messenger RNA. From the messenger RNA, the complementary DNA is uh, 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 co collected by using the reverse transcriptase process and reverse uh, by using RT-PCR process and reverse transcriptase enzyme. After that, it is labeled with the fluorescent probes green for the normal cell and red for the cancer cell. Then they are hybridized uh, to the oligo sequences present in the micro, uh, microarray chip. And then we scan, which is red as <coughs> gray means that is uh, it is not present in the cells. Yellow means present in both types of the cell. Green only in normal cells and red one indicates the diseased cells. What is uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization? It is a molecular cytogenetic technique which uses the fluorescent probes which bind to only those parts of the chromosome uh, which have a high degree of complementarity. Uh, by this, we can do enumeration and special localization of specific DNA sequences within the intact nucleus. And nowadays, uh, we use multiple uh, fluorochromes so that multiple DNA sequences within the same hybridization we can see. And this technique of fish is used in case of detection of genetic abnormalities in sarcomas. So uh, this is the basic step of fish. Uh, we have a probe and a double standard DNA. First, we de denaturize them so that we get the we get separate the strands. After that, we do hybridization and then the probe detection. If the complementary sequence of DNA is present in the target DNA, then the probe will get attached to it. After that, it is analyzed using a fluorescent microscopy. Now, it is a dual fusion translocation probe. Uh, we have normal chromosome A and chromosome B. If it is a fish, then we will see uh, two green dots and two red, uh, two red dots which correspond to the uh, gene locus present in chromosome A and chromosome B. Now, when there is a translocation taking place, so some part of A will uh, combine with the part of B chromosome. And on the fish, we can see one red dot, one green dot, and two fusion dots, uh, which represent the fusion uh, fusion genes. So this uh, dual fusion translocation is also uh, large, uh, is also very useful in case of sarcomas because uh, most of the sarcomas there is uh, translocation at chromosomal level. Then we have spectral karyotype imaging, which is visualization of chromosome in different colors using the FISH technology and a spectral imaging system. The karyotypes are then arranged uh, having different colors and they can be easily detected uh, because if there is a transition from one color to another color or if there is a chromosomal breakpoint, then we can see it clearly as a change in color. So we have different chromosomes and different, uh, different color dyes are used for, its, uh, for different chromosomes. Then the FISH techniques, it takes place that is hybridization for 24 to 72 hours at 37 degrees Celsius temperature. Then we get the spectral karyotype, which is uh, showing different chromosomes having different colors. And if there is any uh, breakpoint or if there is any chromosome <coughs> abnormality, so it can be seen as a change in the color. Then what is immunohistochemistry? Uh, in immunohistochemistry, we use the labeled antibody of known specificity to detect the antigen in the tissue. There are four types of staining. 
न्यूक्लियर साइटोप्लाज्मिक मेम्ब्रेनस एंड मिक्स्ड मिक्स्ड मींस बोथ न्यूक्लियर एंड एज वेल एज साइटोप्लाज्मिक टुगेदर देन द एंटीबॉडी इट इज लेबल्ड विद द क्रोमोजन सो दैट इफ देयर इज अ पॉजिटिव रिएक्शन वी कैन सी द कलर चेंज यूजुअली ब्राउन कलर इज यूज्ड बट रेड समटाइम्स रेड कलर इज आल्सो यूज्ड फॉर द स्किन टिश्यू इन ऑर्डर टू सी द डार्क पिगमेंट्स लाइक मेलेनिन the advantage of ifc is that formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissue can be used so we can use the block uh, that hne block uh, which we use for see, to see the histology that we can use for ifc then there are two types of uh, immunohistochemistry one is the chromogenic type and second is immunofluorescence in chromogenic type uh, the antibody is conjugated to an enzyme mm -hmm. such as peroxidase which catalyzes a color producing reaction so we can see the color change in the uh, slide then immunofluorescence in which antibody is tagged to a fluorophore such as fluorescein and rhodamine which are then seen under a fluorescent microscope uh, this is a example of chromogenic ifc which shows immunostain for s100 showing nuclear as well as cytoplasmic uh, staining in the case of uh, schwannoma Uh, this is the example of immunofluorescence of the skin tissue in case of hanoxolan purpura here uh, we can see um, the pale green one is the epidermis uh, below the epidermis we have superficial dermis and the deep dermis in the superficial dermis there is ice gate deposits in the capillaries which can be seen with uh, the help of uh, immunofluorescence then these are the common markers which are used in case of uh, different malignant soft tissue tumors like wymentin is used for fibrosarcoma but also for extraskeletal ewing sarcoma also for extraskeletal chondrosarcoma and epithelial sarcoma similarly uh, s100 is used for liposarcoma also for extraskeletal chondrosarcoma so these markers are not specific for the tumors uh, therefore uh, for the definite diagnosis uh, we need to go for the molecular test like fish or rtpcr a humanized mouse uh, a humanized mouse is a mouse which is uh, xeno transplanted with human cells or it is engineered engineered in a way to express human gene products so it is used for the in vivo understanding of human specific physiology or pathologies it is used in case of cancers infectious diseases and autoimmune diseases there are different models of the mice which are used to do these studies now uh, the soft tissue tumors are uh, divided on the base of their genomic abnormalities as those tumors having relatively simple genomic abnormalities and tumors having complex genomic abnormalities so relatively simple means they have either specific activating mutation or a inactivating mutation or there is a recurrent structural abnormality usually there is translocation in case of complex the scene is that uh, there are reproducible pattern of imbalances and uh, there is involvement of many breakpoints and also there is no specific pattern so there is a very high degree of complexity in those type of tumors this is a list of soft tissue tumors having complex cytogenetic features angiosarcoma leomyo sarcoma malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor and pleomorphic sarcoma pleomorphic sarcoma can be uh, pleomorphic sarcoma not otherwise specified it can be pleomorphic rhabdomyo sarcoma or pleomorphic liposarcoma then we have a list of soft tissue tumors which have simple cytogenetic features uh, it is a long list uh, but in today's lecture uh, we will cover only the soft tissue sarcomas so first we'll start with those uh, soft tissue sarcomas which are having the complex uh, genetic abnormality first is angiosarcoma it is the malignant neoplasm showing various uh, varying degree of vascular differentiation the common site is the skin of the head and neck region then it can also occur in soft tissues bones visceral organs and retroperitoneum on the histology we can see there are numerous irregularly shaped anastomosing vascular channels which are lined by atypical endothelial cells and it shows a high it is very highly infiltrated uh, infiltrative type of tumor and poorly demarcated the closest uh, differential diagnosis is kaposi sarcoma and hemangioma the risk factors involved in angiosarcoma are thorium arsenic and vinyl chloride exposure especially if the tumor is in the lungs 
then uh, it shows positivity for the vascular uh, markers like cd34 cd31 ve uh, gfr etc on the ihc and uh, at the cytological level there is gain at chromosome number 5 chromosome number 8 and chromosome number 20 Uh, the genetics uh, uh, involved in angiosarcoma is there is KDR mutation in case of primary breast angiosarcoma, and if it is a radiation induced or lymphedema uh, associated angiosarcoma after radical mastectomy, then there are semic amplification, and FLT4 amplifications are seen in case of secondary angiosarcomas. Now it is a picture of IHC uh, of angiosarcoma showing CD31 endothelial cell positivity. Second is the leiomyosarcoma, which is a malignant tumor of varying degree of smooth muscle differentiation. It is the most common uh, primary malignant tumor of uterus, but other sites are skin, deep tissue, and large vessels like inferior vena cava. On histology, it is of three types: spindle type or conventional type. Second is epithelioid type, and third is myxoid type. On the histology, uh, we can diagnose leiomyosarcoma if there is presence of a typical triad, which consists of severe atypia increased mitosis and tumor cell necrosis so this criteria is also used to um, differentiate it from leiomyoma which is its uh, closest differential diagnosis then second is endometrial stromal sarcoma on the ihc it show positivity for the smooth muscle actin desmin h caldesmon erpr positivity and p16 and p53 overexpression is seen now here in the first image we can see uh, the tumor cells are having severe atypia having hyperchromatic nucleus and prominent nucleoli in the second image there is a uh, presence of uh, tumor cell necrosis in these areas and in the third we can see there is presence of atypical mitosis then uh, the structural aberrations uh, of chromosome 1 7 10 13 and 14 are seen in leiomyosarcoma there is gain at chromosome 1q 12 to 13 and losses at chromosome 1 uh, chromosome 3 chromosome 8 13 and 13q 32 to q terminal uh, now talking about the genetics uh, in case of hereditary leiomyosarcoma there is loss of rb1 gene and for sporadic leiomyosarcoma there are abnormalities involving ckn2a ccnd1 and ccnd3 genes the mutations are seen in t50 tp53 atrx and med12 and in uh, some cases of epithelioid type of the leiomyosarcoma there is uh, nr4a3 pgr fusion gene or there are pgr rearrangement seen in 25% cases of myxoid leiomyosarcoma there is plaque g1 rearrangement if t53 mutations are present then it leads to adverse prognosis in the recent study it has been seen that chi3l1 melk prc1 and all these uh, genes are overexpressed in case of leiomyosarcoma whereas in case of leiomyomas two genes hpgd and tes are overexpressed in benign metastasizing uh, type of leiomyoma there are terminal deletions in 19q and 22q chromosomes now talking about pleomorphic sarcomas pleomorphic sarcomas are high grade tumors having uh, numerous mitotic figures and frequent necrosis on the histology they consist of fibroblast to myofibroblast and histiocyte like cells with pleomorphism and bizarre cells arranged in a storiform or fascicular pattern with inflamed collagenous stroma the most common site is lower extremity but can also be seen in the retroperitoneum head and neck region and in the breast uh, pleomorphic sarcoma is a diagnosis of exclusion uh, and the cytogenetic rearrangement is very complex so we cannot use ihc uh, we go for spectral karyotyping uh, here in this picture We can see uh, it is a pleomorphic sarcoma case which is uh, which is uh, showing extensive aneuploidy. There is triploidy, tetraploidy, and some of the chromosomes are uh, having query that is we do not know the definite uh, type or category of the chromosome. Now we will start with those sarcomas which are having a relatively simple genomic abnormalities. First is alveolar soft part sarcoma, which is a rare tumor of uncertain histogenesis. In less than one, it is it forms less than one percent of the soft tissue sarcoma. 
on the histology there is presence of large polygonal cells having abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm arranged in a nest or a pseudo alveolar pattern with a rich capillary network now there is a presence of intracytoplasmic rhomboid shape or rod shaped crystals which make the diagnosis specific uh, most common site is extremities but in children the most common site is the head and neck region that is the orbit and the tongue now on the ihc a uh, tef3 over expression is seen and cathepsin k positivity the uh, the intracytoplasmic rhomboid or rod shaped crystals seen in this case are pass positive and diastase resistant uh, there is a non balanced type of translocation in chromosome x and chromosome uh, 17 due to which a fusion gene is formed between asps cr1 and tef3 gene in the clinical trial it has been found recently that the drug crizotinib which is a cmat inhibitor uh, can be used for disease stabilization this is the ihc uh, picture showing the stain of uh, tef3 which is a strong nuclear uh, uh, stain then we have clear cell sarcoma which is also called the melanoma of the soft parts it is also a rare tumor in this there is nested proliferation of the clear or eosinophilic cells which are polygonal and they are separated by a fibrous septa sometimes tuton type of multinucleated giant cells are also seen uh, on the ihc s100 sox10 hmb45 milan a mitf are positive and uh, there is a translocation involving chromosome number 12 and chromosome 22 due to which there is a formation of a fusion gene ewsr1 atf1 uh, the protein product of this fusion gene stimulate the activity of melanocyte stimulating hormone therefore uh, it forms melanin and it is called as the melanoma of the soft part now in the recent uh, study a unique type of clear cell carcinoma uh, sarcoma occurring uh, in the git shows two type of fusion first is ewsr1 atf1 and the novel one was ewsr1 and crep1 fusion so it is a ihc image showing diffuse nuclear as well as cytoplasmic staining uh, of the tumor with s100 expression then we have endometrial stromal sarcoma it is a low grade sarcoma on the histology there is presence of nodule or tongue like pattern uh, invading into the myometrium of the uniform spindle shaped cells they are arranged in weak fascicles Uh, the tumor cell resemble the proliferative phase stroma of the endometrium having a infiltrative type of growth and lymphovascular proliferation is also commonly seen the risk factor for this uh, tumor is prolonged estrogen exposure tamoxifen uh, intake and pelvic radiations it shows uh, cd10 sma cyclin d1 and ck positivity on ihc and there is a translocation involving chromosome number 7 and 17 due to which the fusion genes are formed zazf1 and jzaz1 uh, less commonly uh, zazf1 and phf1 then uh, next is the extraskeletal myxoid chondrosarcoma it is also a rare tumor and there is no evidence of chondroid differentiation so it is a misnomer it is seen in older males in the deeper tissue of lower extremity on the histology there is present of bland cells uh, with eosinophilic cytoplasm round to oval nucleus and evenly distributed chromatin and inconspicuous nucleoli so it gives a benign appearance and the tumor cells are arranged in cords or small clusters or trabecular cribriform pattern on the ihc it is insm1 nsc synaptophysin positive but negative or focally positive for s100 there are translocations of chromosome 9q22 with uh, many other chromosomes uh, due to which there are large number of fusion uh, partners and fusion genes the most common one is ewsr1 and nr4a3 and uh, rt pcr is less useful because there are large fusion partners so fish is usually used in this cases uh, in case of uh, in advanced cases if we add the anti androgenic agent along with the chemotherapy for the sarcoma then uh, it has shown a promising activity for the prognosis of the uh, of the chondrosarcoma then we have infantile fibrosarcoma it is a congenital type fibrosarcoma seen mostly in the infants and on histology it shows similar features to adult fibrosarcoma like uh, monomorphic cellular proliferation of spindle cells 
minimal cytoplasm and fine chromatin there are numerous mitotic figures and areas of necrosis on the ihc it shows vimentin positivity and there is a translocation between chromosome 12 to uh, and chromosome 15 also trisomies are seen in chromosome 8 11 17 and 20 the fusion uh, gene is etv6 ntrk3 now this fusion gene of etv6 ntr3 is not specific for infantile fibrosarcoma because it is also seen in three other conditions that is congenital uh, mesoblastic nephroma which is a spindle cell tumor of kidney also in case of acute myeloid leukemia only one case with a variant of etv6 ntrk3 fusion gene has been reported and secretory breast carcinoma which is a well differentiated type of carcinoma with a prominent fibrous component then talking about kaposi sarcoma it is a vascular neoplasm driven by human herpes virus 8 infection and commonly seen in hiv infected patients the most common site is skin lymph node uh, and visceral organs in mucosa can also be involved. Now, clinically, it is of four types. Uh, first is the classical or sporadic one, which is seen in the uh, older uh, males in the Mediterranean countries or Eastern European countries. Uh, and in that, uh, it is not associated with HIV. The most common site in that is the lower extremity. Then second is the African or endemic type of Kaposi sarcoma, which is uh, seen in the children and younger adults in which the skin of lower extremity is the most common site and it is also not associated with HIV and in that case if lymph nodes get involved then it uh, become very aggressive. Third is the iatrogenic type or post transplantation type uh, which is seen in patients taking immunosuppressive drugs and the fourth is the HIV AIDS associated which is most common and the most common site is skin and also the lymph nodes. Now, uh, on the histology, it has three uh, stages. First is the patch or the patch stage. Second is the plaque and third is the nodular. All the three types can be seen in the uh, same patient at one time. Uh, then what we are going to see on the histology is the slit-like vascular spaces, which are formed by the spindle endothelial cells, having minimal to moderate atypia with hemorrhage, uh, extravasated RBCs and hemocytin pigment and also the plasma cells. Now, uh, Kaposi sarcoma shows nuclear HHV8 or LANA1 positivity in 100% of the cases. So, uh, histological features in IHC is sufficient for its diagnosis. Now, in this first picture, we can see uh, it is the cutaneous uh, cutaneous lesion in case of Kaposi sarcoma in the form of uh, erythromatous uh, patch and also a, a big plaque is seen on the foot of the patient. Now in the second histological picture, it is the nodular stage of the disease in which there is presence of plump proliferating spindle cells and slit like vascular spaces. This is the IHC picture in which uh, you can see the presence of HHV8 nuclear positivity. Uh, it is uh, granular uh, in appearance. Then we have low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. Uh, it is a low-grade sarcoma and also called as Evans tumor uh, because Evans first described this tumor as hyalinizing spindle cell tumor with giant rosettes. And on histology, there is presence of spindle cell proliferation with the fascicular growth pattern, alternating hyper and hypocellular areas due to the presence of um, fibroid and myxoid stroma. And there are delicate arcading vessels and occasional giant fibroblastic rosettes are also seen. The most common site is trunk and thigh, can be intrathoracic also. On the IHC, it is MUC4, CD99 and BCL2 positive. And uh, cytogenetically, it shows translocation between chromosome number 17 and chromosome 16, which leads to a fusion gene, FUS, CREP 3 l 2 And uh, in the recent studies, um, Single cases diagnosed with the translocation between chromosome 11 and chromosome 16 uh, and the fusion product is a fusion gene is FUS CREP 3 L1 which can uh, which we can uh, successfully amplify by RT-PCR and we can also use the FISH studies to identify the FUS. The differentials are uh, myxofibrosarcoma and perineuroma but uh, these tumors both of them they do not harbor the FUS rearrangements. 
in this picture we can see uh, there is a uh, chromosome 16 and chromosome 11 uh, these this is the p arm of chromosome 16 and p arm of chromosome uh, 11 uh, uh, both of these chromosomes at their 11th locus there is a transformation taking place due to which the fusion gene having this nucleotide sequence is uh, formed uh, it is the IHC image showing strong and diffuse cytoplasmic positivity uh, staining for MUC4. First is the case of large bowel tumor and second is the case of a lung tumor. Then uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, it is a malignant tumor derived from the undifferentiated mesoderm and it shows the uh, phenotypic uh, characteristic of primitive skeletal muscle cells. Uh, it is of three types, embryonal type, alveolar type and pleomorphic type. The embryonal type is most common and it is seen in the children and young adults. Alveolar type has a wide age group range and pleomorphic type is seen in the elderly. On the histology, there is presence of moderately cellular or alternate hypo and hypercellular areas uh, consisting of sheets of tumor cells which can be steelid shaped, spindle or round with scant eosinophilic cytoplasm and round nucleus with inconspicuous nucleoli. We can also see the presence of strap cells, tadpole cells and cambium layer. Now what are strap cells? These are the tumor cells having generous amount of the eosinophilic cytoplasm and mostly seen after the chemotherapy. Uh, then tadpole cells are the cells having the cytoplasmic process and the cambium layer which is seen in case of watered type of the embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma um, in which the growth is in the form of a bunch of grape and cambium uh, layer is nothing but a hypercellular zone which is present beneath the epithelium. Then on IHC it is myoD1, myogenin, desmin and vimentin positive. Watered type is desmin, myoD1, SMA and MSA positive. Uh, in case of uh, embryonal type of rhabdomyosarcoma, there is trisomies involving chromosome 2, 8, 20 and loss of heterozygosity or imprinting at chromosome 11, P15.5. There is inactivating mutations of TP53 and CDK N2A and uh, it, has, it has been seen that defect in RAS or hedgehog pathway has led to increased risk in case of embryonal type of rhabdomyosarcoma. In alveolar type, there is a translocation involving chromosome 2 and chromosome 13 and chromosome 1 and chromosome 13 uh, and the fusion genes formed are PAX3 FOXO1A and PAX7 FOXO1A fusion genes. In case of uh, PAX3 FOXO1A fusion, the prognosis is poorer and if there is also an endemic amplification, then the cores become more aggressive. In the recent advances in the mice study, it has been found that the synergistic loss of INK4A, ARF and MET signaling disruption as well as concomitant inactivation of TP53 and FOS uh, are important for the pathogenesis of rhabdomyosarcoma and two novel fusion genes has been identified in alveolar type of rhabdomyosarcoma leading to PAX3 NCOA1 fusion and PAX3 AFX fusion. It is a IHC image showing myogenin positivity in case of a orbital mass which was of embryonal type of rhabdomyosarcoma. Then uh, myxoid type of the liposarcoma. Uh, this type of tumor occur in four to five decades and it, it shows a high rate of metastasis. On the histology, we can see spindle and steelid shaped cells immersed in a myxoid matrix. Along with that, there is a uh, delicate arborizing capillary pattern called as the chicken wire vasculature. Now, when to call the uh, myxoid liposarcoma as a round cell liposarcoma, which is of high grade type. So, according to WHO, if there is more than 5% of the round cell component in the myxoid liposarcoma, then it can be called as a round cell liposarcoma. It shows Vimentin and S100 positivity, but negative for MDM2 and CD34, which are positive in other type of liposarcomas. Uh, it, on the cytogenetics, it shows a translocation involving chromosome 12 and 16, and uh, also translocation involving chromosome 12 and 22, 
which leads to two fusion genes. One is FUS DDIT3 and EWSR1 DDIT3. So fish can be used for uh, detection of these fusion genes. Now for uh, the recent advancement or the study was that a myxoid type of liposarcoma like phenotype is induced by transfecting the FUS DDIT3 in the mesenchymal progenitor cells or HT1080 sarcoma cells. Here we can see the vimentin immunostaining in the case of myxoid uh, liposarcoma. Then we have well differentiated and de differentiated type of liposarcoma. Well differentiated liposarcoma usually arise in the extremities and really sometimes in the retroperitoneum. On the histology, it is of three types first is lipoma like, then sclerosing type, and inflammatory type. Now, uh, it occurs mostly in the extremity and it shows excellent prognosis. Therefore, it is also called as the atypical lipomatous tumor because although it is a sarcoma, it shows a good prognosis. Then, uh, de differentiated liposarcoma uh, usually occur in the retroperitoneum and it shows high local recurrences as well as distant metastasis. Now, in both of them, there is MDM2 overexpression on the IHC and cytogenetically also they show ring or giant marker chromosomes. Uh, there is amplified sequences derived from the chromosome 12Q13 to Q15, MDM2, SS, HMGA2 and CDK4. Now in the recent advancement it has been shown that MDM2 amplification is seen in all cases of well differentiated liposarcoma but not in case of lipoma and there is identification of PPAP2B as a novel reoccurring translocation partner of the gene, uh, gene HMGA2 in case of lipomas. And it is predicted that the new bright field in situ hybridization technique will replace the fish for the diagnosis of liposarcomas in the future. Here we can see it is a, a relatively simple uh, karyotype of well differentiated liposarcoma. The only chromosomal uh, Abnormality is the presence of a ring chromosome. Now it is the IHC picture. The A1 shows MDM2 positivity and the B shows the CDK4 positivity. They both are positive in case of liposarcomas. Now uh, chromosome number 12. Chromosome number 12 is uh, very important uh, in case of sarcomas and other soft tissue tumors because it is involved in a number of translocations. The Q13, Q14 and Q15 regions are commonly involved. The gene ATF1 is involved in clear cell sarcoma and angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma. DDIT3 as we have seen in case of myxoid liposarcoma. GLI1 in pericytomatous tumor and SAS, CDK4, HMGA2, MDM2 are seen in sarcomas as well as in case of lipoma, leomyoma, aggressive angiomyxoma and all these. Now in the second, it is a chromogenic in situ hybridization, uh, hybridization picture uh, which is showing the MDM2 amplification in the nucleus in case of well differentiated liposarcoma. Now, this is a, a tabular compilation of all the different types of liposarcoma uh, which we have seen in the previous slides showing the molecular aberration, histological features, anatomical side, clinical behavior and response to therapy in a one table form. Now here we can see it is also showing the same thing that is the uh, different type of the uh, soft tissue tumors uh, and their cell type that is their cells on cytology or on histology whether it is round cell type, spindle cell type, epithelioid or myxoid type then uh, about their um, uh, molecular aberrations as well as their IHCs. How do we grade the uh, soft tissue sarcomas? For grading, we use the French system uh, of grading and it consists of three parameters. First is tumor differentiation, second is mitotic count and third is the tumor necrosis. Now okay, accordingly we give it the score and at last we add the score and accordingly we uh, decide to which grade the tumor belongs. So uh, for tumor differentiation score one is given when the sarcoma closely resembles the normal adult mesenchymal tissue like in case of low grade leomyosarcoma. Score two is given when the sarcoma having the histological type which is, uh, which is certain like in case of myxoid liposarcoma 
and three is given in the case of embryonal or undifferentiated sarcomas or sarcoma of doubtful type. Then the mitotic count. Score one is given when there is zero to nine mitosis per 10 hypogos field. Score two when there is 10 to 19 mitosis per hypogos field and three when it's 20 or more mitosis per, per 10 hypogos field. Then tumor necrosis. Score zero is for no necrosis. One when there is less than 50% and score two if there is 50 percent or more than 50 percent of tumor necrosis if we add all the scores and the total score is two or three it is grade one tumor if it is four or five then it is grade two and six seven eight is for the then it is a grade three uh, three type of the tumor so the uh, take home message of today's lecture is that the many soft tissue sarcomas have recurrent chromosomal uh, rearrangements uh, which produce specific gene fusion and the identification of the specific rearrangement is very important for giving a definitive diagnosis so that uh, we can improve our diagnostic accuracy and we can provide the key features of tumor behavior such as progression and response to the therapeutics and so that a proper uh, therapy can be given to the patient. These are the references I have used. Thank you.